I want to talk about five musical things today. Here they are. 12 notes, intervals, chords, intervals again, and scales. These are the five things that we're going to talk about. The basis of Western music theory is that there are only 12 notes. That's it. Some are lower, some are higher, but there are only 12 notes. Music theory is a tool that we use to help explain musical sounds. Why does this sound good? Why does this sound bad? Why do these notes sound good together, but really different apart? Music theory is a tool that we use to help explain all of that. This is more than 12 notes. Definitely more than 12 notes. It's, it's 25. So what are you talking about? Check it out. These notes right here sound really similar, right? Let's just look at 12 notes. How about that? Let's put this away. These right here are all 12 notes. Let's write the white keys down. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And then we'll write the keys up top. C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp. Yikes, I'm running out of sharpie here. A sharp. The tricky thing about these notes up top, each note has two different names. So this note can either be C sharp, but it can also be D flat. This one can also be E flat. This one can be G flat, this one can be A flat, and this one can be B flat. Now, they have two different names, but they are the same note. And the reason that is, is purely because of communication. Here's me playing C sharp, here's me playing D flat. Same exact note. It's much easier to talk about a series of notes if they each have their own letter. So for example, if I'm talking about C, D, and E flat, it's much easier to talk about these three notes if each one of them has their own letter. So it would be easier to say C, D, and E flat than it would be to say C, D, and D sharp. Again, it's purely for communication. Some water in my nose there. Now, when you're looking at all these notes, it's important to know where C is. Luckily, there's a little pattern going on that we can follow. Two, three. If you take a look at the two black keys right here, C is the key that is the left of these two black keys right here. Put another octave, another set of notes. Two black keys, three black keys. Two black keys, three black keys. Let's look at this thing. Two black keys, three black keys. Two black keys, three black keys. It's the same thing. The two black keys move to the key to the left. Let's play these notes. There's no note here, right? But if there were a note, it would sound like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another set of notes right here. These two notes are an octave apart. What is an octave? An octave is an interval. What is an interval? An interval is the space between two notes. Interval time. So right here, we've got a pretty big space between these two notes, we're skipping all of these other notes, right? We're just going right from C to C. So this is a pretty big interval. So let's go ahead and look at the smallest interval. Take this other one away. So the smallest interval that we can talk about is called a half step. And I'm gonna show it to you right now. That was a half step between C and C sharp. There's a few words for half step. Another word is called semitone. Here. These two notes are a semitone away. This is the smallest interval. This is the smallest, and this is the smallest, and this is the smallest. 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 The smallest.
the smell the smell of the smell the smellest interval. The next interval after that is called a whole step or a whole tone. Same thing. That was a whole tone between C and D. Here's a whole tone between D and E. Here's a whole tone between E and F sharp. So this one's kind of tricky. Even though we went from a white key to a black key, it's still a whole step because we're just doing two half steps because a whole step is two half steps. A whole step is two half steps. So here's a whole step played together. Here's a half step played together. Kind of chaotic. Let's go back to the whole step. So the next interval that we would do would be called a minor third. <clears throat> and that is a whole step and a half. Otherwise known as three half steps. And after that would be a major third. And a major third is two whole steps. Here's one whole step. Here's another whole step. There we go. We've just made a major third interval. It's called a third because intervals are actually referred to by their tones. So we call it a third because it's three tones away. One, two, three. And the reason that we're talking about intervals so much is because intervals are what make up a chord. Let's play a regular old C major chord. This is a C major chord. What makes this chord a major chord is its intervals. If we take a look at these notes right here, these notes are a major third apart. A major third is two whole steps. The second interval is between E and G. This is gonna be one, two, three. This is gonna be a minor third right here. So we've got a major third and a minor third. And then there's actually one more interval that we're working on right now between C and G. This interval is called a fifth, again, because it's five tones away. C, D, E, F, G, five tones. The most common chord that people play is called the triad. And the triad has three notes in it. One, two, and three. That was a C major triad. So let's play real keys now. Again, how do we find C? We find the two black keys, find the key to the left of it, the white key to the left of it. The C major chord is a triad. Let's make a different major chord right now. Let's make an F major chord. This is an F major chord because we've got a major third here and a minor third here. Let's test it out. Whole step, whole step. That's a major third. And then whole step, half step. That's a minor third. Major third, minor third. Fifth. That's, that's what a major chord is right there. One thing that we can do is we can actually change this note and move it up to here. And now we're still playing a C chord, but we're playing what's called an inversion. An inversion is where you take one note and move it up an octave. So this is still a C chord. It's still got the same notes in it, E, G, C, but we've just taken the C, moves it up here. This is a zero inversion C chord. This is a first inversion C chord. This is a second inversion C chord. All triads, all the same chord, different inversions. Now we're gonna go back and talk about intervals again for a second because I wanna make sure that we understand something. Intervals are the space between notes. It's really important to note that we are counting distances. We are counting spaces. So I'll see a lot of people when they'll try to count, but they'll start with interval. Uh, I'll, I'll ask them to make major third starting on C and they'll go C, half step, half step, half step, half step. That was four half steps. Why doesn't this sound like a major third? Well, because the first thing that you counted wasn't actually a distance. You have to count distances. So you have to start at C and then count your movement. So you can't start by saying half step because you actually haven't gone a half step yet. You have to do the half step first. So we're starting at C. Here's the first half step. Here's the first, second half step. 
Here's the third half step. Here's the fourth half step. So there is our major third. So again, we are counting distances. It's really, really important to know that. You have to start moving first, and then you count that movement. Okay, we talked about 12 notes, we've talked about intervals, we've talked about chords, we've talked about intervals again, and now let's talk about scales. First question is, what the heck is a scale? A scale is just seven notes in a sequence. That's it. Now there are many types of scales, but the most common scale is called the major scale. And it sounds like this. That was a C major scale I just played you. Here's an F major scale. Here's a G major scale. Those were three different scales, but they were all the major scale. I just started them a different place. And a major scale is actually defined by a specific pattern of intervals. And that pattern is this. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Screenshot this. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step. Half step. Ding! Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Again, notice that I'm not starting right away by staying whole step. I'm starting on the first note because we haven't gone anywhere yet. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. What about a different spot? F. 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 Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. G. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So no matter what, no matter where we start, as long as we follow this pattern of intervals, we're going to build a major scale. This pattern right here of whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step is not just on keys either. Check this guy out, right? This is a guitar. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna play an E major scale on this string. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So that was an E major scale. I just followed this pattern right here and I did it. Now I'm gonna play an A major scale on guitar. A, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Same thing, whether it's on keys or guitar, it's the same language, it's just whole steps and half steps. Guitar can get kind of crazy because you can actually play whole steps here or here. So you can play scales this way. Or you can also play them like this. One of them is much easier to do than the other. The fact remains that it is just this. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Different scales have different interval patterns, but they are all defined by some sort of interval pattern. So we have talked about the fact that there are only 12 notes, what an interval is, chords, intervals again, making sure that we understand intervals and scales. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. I'd be more than happy to answer anything that, that needs a little bit more explanation. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for watching.